the presentation of the Jackie Robinson Fortitude Award. And this is an award that we give out every month, um, just in uh, recognition. We really usually try and tie it to the theme. And so as you know, tonight is finance and real estate. So we're proud to be presenting that to Mr. Sean Allen, who's the principal mortgage broker at Matrix Mortgage Global, which is rated the number four mortgage broker in Canada. So we're gonna have the founder of the award come up, Mr. DeWitt Lee. He founded this award uh, back in February 2014. And we've had the honor of uh, presenting this award with him at First Fridays ever since. So I'd like to welcome Mr. DeWitt Lee to the stage to do the award presentation. Please welcome Mr. DeWitt Lee. who we presented this award to in the past, including Mr. Sanders, who was the first recipient, and of course, his uh, honorable, beautiful mother, uh, Bev Sanders, who's here today. And if you recognize any of the recipients, make some noise and clap for them like they were here. This is the 70th anniversary of Jackie Robinson's incredible breakthrough through Major League Baseball. Give it up for Jackie Robinson, everyone. Thank you to Warren Salmon, who caught the vision, and through my organization, the Toronto Community Advisory Board, and First Fridays for the last three years, we have been proud to present this award to Mr. Fitzroy Corner. Who likes the T-98? Come on now. Mr. The late, great Austin Clark. Honorable Margaret Best. She's in the room, everyone. Act like they're in the room, Mr. Tony Williams. There she is. Bev Salmon. Trey Anthony. Come on, the king of my hair. Come on. These are all incredible people who received this award. Thank you for your acknowledgement of their achievements. So here we are with a presentation 
to a very distinguished member of the real estate community. And very often, Warren and I, we have our, our long list that we have to work our way to a short list to a candidate. And I, it, it kind of broke my heart tonight, or during that deciding process, because there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot. But when I come into this room and I see so many promising, so much potential for great leadership in this real estate industry, I feel like, you know what, greatness is coming. So give it up for yourself for being here in this room, being educated and primed and ready to change this real estate industry. I mean, there's not many industries that really matter at the end of the day. I mean, there's education, there's things that really are key. But real estate, that's the one thing that they don't make more of. And if we don't find ourselves in a position of dominance, a position of authority, then we find ourselves in a position of servitude. And we cannot, we cannot let the next generation of citizens of this city, of this country, to just be comfortable with renting. Just comfortable with helping someone else pay a mortgage, right? And I feel like that's what makes you some of the most important change agents in our city, in our country. Because you have an opportunity to change the destination, to change the destiny for a family forever. And that was one of the greatest things that I took out my meeting with Mr. Allen, was that education has to be a priority. You can't find yourself willing to forego the future of a family for a sale. The integrity of what you do and how you do it is crucial to the future of our community. And I have, I have in my heart great peace to know that those who are leading the charge in the real estate industry here in Toronto happen to be built with incredible integrity and incredible purpose. So I'm just so grateful to be among you all today. But especially among Mr. Allen, who finds himself in very elite company. Ladies and gentlemen, this man has been recognized as one of the greatest in our province in what he does. And he did it so in such a humble fashion that I believe that is his secret to his success. I decided tonight to just share some facts with you. Although I felt as I was preparing this message and I was gearing up to speak to real estate agents, I found the need to talk about the real estate of our mind and talk about who's owning what inside your head. But as I look at this crowd, I realize that this is a, an audience of great of great presence and potential and understanding of their role in our society. And let's just focus simply on the great and incredible achievements of tonight's honoree. Now before he got involved with real estate in this capacity, he was on the other end of the transaction. He was an owner. So at 24 years old, owning his first piece of real estate, I found that to be pretty impressive. There's not a lot of 24 year old young men or women that you'll find that are aspiring to own property. So there was a piece of, there was a seed planted in him early that ownership was the only way. And I believe that's the message that I hope you all take with you as you engage potential homeowners, that ownership is the only way. Ownership, such as Warren takes ownership of this piece of real estate that he owns. A kind of stewardship and a responsibility that I think transforms communities. And that's what I'm so hopeful for. To be able to plant families and communities that can develop those communities 
and make them places where children are free to run. Of responsible homeowners that get back to the neighborhood that they belong to. And I believe that's what homeowners represent. And I want to see you all leading the next generation of homeowners. Mr. Allen, after owning his first property, he learned a lot about the business, especially when he had to go in his own pocket and pay someone $600 for the transaction. He found out fast that it is lucrative and it also that there's an opportunity. He told me that he asked a friend as he was parlaying the idea of what line of work he should go into. He was told that the mortgage industry had too many people in it. And for anyone that wasn't interested in competing, for anyone that didn't believe that they had the potential to be great, they would run from that moment. They would run from that opportunity. But now Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen saw it as an opportunity to become the very best. And he stepped up to the challenge. He decided to get into mortgage brokering. And as I did the interview with him, I learned that he was a very savvy businessman. Very savvy businessman who was in tune to the industry, in tune to what was happening around him. And he was bold enough to step out in faith. He was bold enough to believe in his own intuition. And I want you to all to walk out of here with belief in your own intuition. Because it is that belief in himself that has led him to this moment today. He told me during the housing crash, where banks were disappearing and running away from refinance opportunities, something that homeowners need to improve on their home and to be able to pay for college and whatever else they need to access that income and that, that, that equity in their home. He saw that as an opportunity and as a niche he needed to run into. Fast forward to where we are today. Mr. Allen, after carefully, strategically carving out a niche for his company, he is in charge of six offices across the GTA. Come on, now, make some noise. Six offices that he tells me that he visits every month. Excuse me, every week. He visits every week to make sure that things are going on properly. The way he envisions an operation to run. Who's seen Undercover Boss? Yeah, you guys the Undercover Boss? He's like Undercover Boss, but like Discover Boss. <laughs> it's like the opposite. But he shows up, and that's important to show up, to be present. It's your investment. And as you all begin to establish investments on your own, I want to encourage you to be just as responsible and hands-on as Mr. Allen is with his six investments. These six offices represent over 100 agents. How many agents do we have in the room? Do we have any agents in the room? What's with the timidness? Come on, let them see. Someone might be trying to buy a house now. Come on now. Somebody might be looking for some, some information.
Number one, in sales in Ontario. Number one, in units in Ontario. There's something special about being number one. Something very intimidating about being number one. Because everybody wants to come after you. It's not easy being number one. But this brother carries it with a, a, a certain kind of grace and a, a certain kind of expectancy that I respect. Because that was his goal. That was his goal to be number one. And today, he's recognized as being number one. There's also some statistics out there with a top 75 in his industry. And he finds himself in that number. But now the lower tier, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about number four out of the top 75. Ladies and gentlemen, please make me some noise. Please put your hands together. We're talking about... Now, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, but this is a secret. <laughs> and this is probably going to be the, the one thing that many of you may find very difficult to do because it involves allowing your ego to take a back seat. This man told me, and I, when I asked him about Jackie Robinson, I said, you know, Jackie Robinson, what he did, he broke the color barrier. He went into a space where we didn't exist. And he didn't just, he didn't just exist, he stood out. He was a star. And he wasn't scared to shine. He wasn't scared to show what he could do. And Mr. Allen wasn't scared to show what he could do, because he did it. And he wasn't scared to show that he could shine, because he did it. But he did not let them know he was black. I know. For a very long time, and he told me just maybe, just 2008, I think he said. He told me that his LinkedIn profile was not him. The, the image <laughs> was not him. Because he understood the environment he was operating in. And he had a mission. His mission was to be the best. And that meant he wasn't going to allow anyone to determine he wasn't capable of fulfilling anything that he promised them. And he wasn't going to allow someone's biases to control his ability. He wasn't going to allow anyone's prejudice to influence his purpose. And you know, a scripture, a sister shared a scripture earlier today. And I'm so grateful for that. And I'm just as grateful to be able to share a scripture tonight. It says to be as harmful as a dove, but be as cunning as a, as a snake. Hey, it is what it is. And this brother, this brother had the understanding of the environment he was operating in and said, you know what, I wasn't going to let anyone make any decisions about my ability, about what I can do based off the color of my skin. And because of the power of the internet. He was able to do so for a very long time to be able to build an entire empire. We're talking over six offices in the GTA. We're talking about over 100 agents. He was able to do so because he was smart. He was cunning. And that is something that we need to embrace and understand. That if we are going to succeed through the grace of God, that we have been given an ability to be cunning. And I expect you all to be able to take that. I, listen, I ran for mayor. And during my campaign in Chinatown, when I passed out my material, there was no face. There was no picture of me on the marketing material. It was just Lee for me. Lee how ma. Lee for me. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Be cunning. Ladies and gentlemen, be cunning. And, but harmful as a dove. He told me that Every day, someone comes to him with an idea that's unscrupulous. And he said, you know what, I will not risk it. I will not do bad business. I will have the integrity. I will, I will be the, the most outstanding brokerage known to man. And he said that as a, as a as, as priority, that he was going to have the integrity and be a harmless to be as helpful as possible. I asked him, what's the future? What's the future? And he told me simply to educate 
his people, to educate them about the opportunity that resides right here in Canada to own something that gives you a voice, something that gives you a reason to, to, to be heard, and that is ownership. And so as this man works with our current mayor, Mr. Tory, and he works with the great people of Scarborough, his home, he is locked in and focused on making sure that our community will continuously have an opportunity to learn how to make investments, when to make investments, and why to make investments. And to me, that is one of the greatest things that I can, that anyone can be honored for, is the, is the need to pass on the knowledge and the need to educate his people. So all of the acumens and all of the achievements, to me, shadow in comparison to his purpose to lead our people into ownership and helping us take our rightful position in this country. I am so honored and, 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 and I share this privilege with Mr. Warren Salmon tonight to call up tonight's Jackie Robinson Fortitude Award winner. Please put your hands together after the video for Mr. Sean Allen. I was a white guy online. 
squat. Wow. All right? And uh, when you said that, it was like these guys were laughing in the back. And it wasn't because um, I was trying to deceive anyone, right? I just wasn't trying to be stereotyped in the industry as dominated by white people. I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying I had to come in with a different angle. So all the advertising um, and promotion that I did, I never, I never put my face, I just put the company logo. So nobody really knew who was behind um, the company. So all that hard work paid off to actually be able to hold this up today. So this is actually, this is very good, man. I appreciate it. Um, a little bit about the company. Um, we specialize in alternative financing. <clears throat> it's big, man, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of greats have gotten this award, man. Gina Augustine, I just met her two years ago. Yeah. Oh man. But um uh, Yeah. Take a minute, take a minute. I need to give it up. Thanks, Um we, we specialize in um alternative finances, so deals that the banks can't do. A lot of those clients come our way. So we just had a record month in June like it's right. crazy. Yeah. Um, millions, baby, millions. And we don't we don't really do deals. Um, you know, we, we, we kind of cater to homeowners um, as opposed to buyers because at any given time, there's more homeowners than home buyers. So when the market right now is going down, people can't sell the house. They're coming to us and uh, getting financing where they couldn't get it elsewhere. Right. So, Kenneth. Yeah. Yeah. His presentation was very good, um, talking about generational wealth and yep. the story of OJ or Jim. <laughs> and that stuff is real, but um, you know, there's different strategies. Um, for me, I own quite a few properties as well. Um, but I like to invest in mortgages itself, so I lend out money. Um, last year we had our record year, we did 210 million in sales last year. And I know we could do more, and it's all about financial literacy. And I was talking with um, Mincy Hunter with regards to teaching people how to do taxes and teaching people the fundamentals of money. Um, when I was talking to Dwight earlier, I was telling him, I was like, people don't even understand that that if you have your money sitting in the bank, you're actually losing money by keeping it in the bank. Because every dollar that comes into existence comes into existence with debt attached to it. So money is debt. And if you don't understand that, you'll never make money, you'll never be rich. So prices aren't really going up. It's the value of your money is going down. So once you figure that out, that you'll be more prosperous. But I really appreciate this award, and thank you guys. All right, once again, let's hear for Mr. Sean Allen. Also want to uh, thank Mr. Dwight Lee for for making that wonderful presentation. And um, we do have some, some door prizes. 